This week on Supercars Talk, McLaughlin gets a three-peat, Team 18 beats Triple Eight, and I've found Craig Lowndes' replacement, Lex Kelly's in for the job. Before I get into the racing, a couple of little news items have been bubbling away over last few months, I suppose. Uh, looks like Channel 7 has agreed to take over the free-to-air component from Channel 10 as of next year. Uh, from what I'm hearing, Foxtel will be staying the same. Uh, you know, every practice qualifying race uh, will be broadcast live and ad-free, while there will be better coverage on Channel 7 uh, for the free-to-air people. Uh, not sure whether that means there's just more on the weekends when they do cover it, uh, when they cover it fully, uh, I suppose, as opposed to the highlights packages. Uh, I did hear a rumour that uh, there would be at least one race every weekend covered live, uh, but I've then also been told that it's still going to be the six main events uh, that will be covered live, and then you'll have kind of more a, um, a better highlights package, I suppose, uh, where you get an, a bit of an intro where you get to see the highlights of qualifying, and then you get to see a, a you know a proper kind of race coverage rather than. I, honestly, I have not watched uh, one of the Channel Ten highlights packages, so I don't know. But from what I've heard, is that it's kind of crammed into an hour. You have a little bit at start, a little bit of the finish, uh, a heap of ad breaks. So really, you don't get to see much racing. Uh, details are still emerging, but at least it looks like a TV deal has been signed. It's not going to be for the same kind of money as what the last one was, but no surprises there. The uh, economy has changed a bit since that deal was signed and, um, well, yeah, COVID-19 happened and, you know, fucked whatever was left that was good in the economy. Another little nugget that came out this week uh, was Ryan Walkinshaw admitting that at the start of the year they had two manufacturers lined up uh, for next year uh, to replace Holden. Now... Is this a bit of a Ryan Walkinshaw beat up or is this the truth? He's saying one of the companies was at contract stage, um, non-disclosure agreements, so he can't say who it was. Uh, but then COVID hit and everything kind of went on the back burner. Uh, I have seen a lot of people making comments that at the start of the year, there was no chance that if you'd signed a manufacturer at the start of the year, no chance you'd be ready for 2021. It would have been 2022 at the earliest, blah, blah, blah. Um, GRM did it quicker than that. Um, and Stones, when they had to turn those Falcons into Mercedes, did it in about three months at the end of the year. Granted, those Mercedes weren't exactly competitive from day one, Uh but, you know, that it could have been done. Uh, and the other thing was, I read a few comments from people saying that Walkinshaws, uh, they don't have the expertise to be able to do something like this. Uh, well, they were the homologation team for Holden for a very long time. Uh, they've still got some people there that would have been involved in that process. And, you know, some of the people there are not. You know, they're not exactly idiots there. Uh, so they've got basically as much knowledge as anybody else out there, uh, other than probably Triple Eight and Penske. Um, you know, they've, they've, got a, and they've got, you know, the name of the team is Walkinshaw Andretti United. Uh, so they've got, you know, a few resources overseas that they could kind of, um, you know, turn to to get a bit of a hand with that. Uh, yeah, so some of those comments, uh, yeah, some ill-informed people out there, I think, uh, would be interesting to find out who it was that was interested and, you know, the rumours keep circulating that there is a couple of other manufacturers interested who they are and, you know, what are the likely chances of this happening with this Gen 3 that's coming along, uh, you know, and what's kind of holding some of these manufacturers back, whether it is the engine kind of 
issue where they, you know, essentially have to build their own engine and things like that. Because Ryan did mention about, you know, in the two liter, uh, the I was going to call them the two liter super tours over in Britain, uh, but in the British Touring Car Championship where they have what they call a Tocker engine that is unbranded that. You can just go along and buy that if you don't want to do your own engine program. Uh, you know, and they've, they've got plenty of manufacturers over there that are in... Uh, they, I'm not sure if they're actually manufacturers or people that have just decided to race that model of car, but at least they've got diversity, which is something we're going to be severely missing uh, if the Commodores go and it's just a Mustang Cup. So the racing for the weekend. This is what happens when you have soft tyres only for the whole weekend on a track without a lot of degradation. Uh, yeah, this is what everyone's been wanting. Uh, going off comments on forums and bookface and places like that. Oh, they're all the fake racing with the mixed tyre compounds. And uh, then we get Scott McLaughlin wins all three races. So just remember everyone who doesn't like the fake racing of the mixed tyre compounds this is what happens when you essentially have too many tyres for the weekend or you know no choice everyone has the same thing to play with and you know you can always have decent tyres on the car when you go out um, the best guy in the best team rises to the top and wins everything uh, so yeah Scott McLaughlin actually wins the triple crown uh, but doesn't get the triple crown trophy for it once again, we saw a few incidences over the weekend. Uh, nothing like last weekend, but there was a couple. Uh, we did see twice a Tickford car in that kind of first corner area, um, basically losing a wheel. Uh, I'm not sure. It seems to be a little bit of a Tickford issue that when you have that wheel-on-wheel -wheel kind of contact, that you know, the wheel just pops out. Um, yeah, in the incidents, you know... Uh, probably racing incidents but yeah just seems to be an issue that they have maybe they could build them a bit stronger um yeah pick up some more points things like that um we've got quite quite a few little incidents nothing that was you know really overly exciting um lebrock had a bump on run on rick and he just got a five second penalty for it you know so you know punishment fit the crime on that one um Chaz and Percat that was an interesting one it did I mean they'd been kind of going at each other for a few laps that was a really good battle and it did look Nick kind of stopped a bit early and was you know struggling on the inside line blocking Chaz Chaz was trying to get across for the undercut it looked a bit like Nick was going to prop in the middle of the corner and Chaz got him and spun him off the other way. Uh, for what the incident was, the outcome was a lot bigger than what it normally would have been. But because of the way the corner is, it was a lot bigger. Uh, Chaz got a 15 second penalty for it. Not sure if, you know, then if that penalty is big enough for spearing someone right off the track. But then you kind of go, well, they were having a heated battle. Nick did kind of prop to stop Chaz there and Chaz kind of kept on with it a bit. Um, I, I'm, I don't like doing this. I'm a little bit torn on this one. Um, I don't think it's entirely Mostert's fault, but it was very unfair on Nick what happened. So, yeah. We also saw Gary Jacobson and Macaulay Jones get together. Um, Gary got a 15 second penalty for that. You know, um, he went in too hard. Jones didn't give him enough room, but yeah, Gary got the penalty for it. Um, Coulthard and Fullwood, um, yeah, Coulthard and another half ass kind of passing attempt. He got a f one of those five second penalties for it. Um, I just. Would you see Scott McLaughlin stuck there, you know, behind forward like that? You know, something's going on there. Uh, we saw a really good battle with Frosty and Shane Van Gisbergen. Um, that was really good to watch. Uh, there was a little bit of a bump and run at the end of that, but I think, you know, especially Shane would turn around and go, hey, that's all fair in love and war. 
I was blocking a bit, uh, and that's what I was trying to get to last week, where I was saying, you know, Shane's usually a pretty good racer with these kind of things. You know, he he's blocking a little bit. He expects to get a little bit of a punt. Uh, you know, it was a little bit out of character f- for these days, what he did to Percat last weekend, uh, but I covered that in last weekend's one. One that I do want to give a little bit of time to, um, Waters and Wing Cup, and this is where Cam lost his wheel. Uh, but what I found interesting was coming out of the pits and then just being able to come, like, chop straight across. Uh, I can see why they do it. If it was me and you are allowed to do it under the rules, I'd be the first one to chop straight across there. But we did see a few incidents on the weekend where you might have had two cars coming out of the pits and someone was coming around the back guy and then, you know, the, the guy in front chops across and all of a sudden you've got someone diving across. Um, and there's the, just that potential there where you've got such a big difference in speed at that point that, we could see a big accident one day. Uh, so I'm wondering if, you know, maybe you're coming out of the pits, you're going to stay to the right there rather than this chop across and block and prop and things like that. Because uh, there's probably a few unnecessary incidents over the weekend. And as I said, we haven't had a major incident yet, but it's, you know, there's good potential that we could have a major incident there at some point in the future. And then all of a sudden everyone will be up in arms about it because of it. Um, and something with a slight little rule tweak, we could easily fix it. Um, you know, paint a white line down there or, you know, something like that. It's not hard to fix. So let's look at it. So at the end of the weekend, uh, McLaughlin, a perfect 300 point weekend. And, uh, because now apparently we do round kind of scores and stuff. So Van Gisbergen was second overall. Jamie was third overall. Surprise, surprise. Um, then we had Scott Pye. Uh, team 18 were actually, they looked pretty good. Uh, and in the last race, uh, they were the two best Triple Eight cars. So, um, mm, yeah. Uh, maybe I should shut my mouth sometimes uh we'll see if this continues into townsville though and as i said over the whole weekend it was penske triple eight triple eight and then the team 18 car um but frosty also finished up seventh so you know team 18 did really well they had a good weekend um everyone's favorite driver nick perker ended up fifth uh courtney was sixth for the lead tickford car uh no surprises there he it also helped that Waters got taken out in the third race. Uh, but, you know, Courtney is basically the top Tickford car now. Uh, exactly where Will Davison should have been. Uh, Coulthard, you know, eighth. Definitely, you know, it, it, he should be fourth. At, at worst, he should be fourth going off, you know, McLaughlin's weekend. But anyway, um... Championship-wise, McLaughlin is now on 1,324 points, which is 177 ahead of Wink Up. He's getting closer to that. Essentially, he needs to be 300 ahead before Bathurst because um, anything can happen at Bathurst, and it's looking like it's going to be the last round of the championship. And then, basically, everyone else is over 300 points behind, so it's starting to get to a struggle. Uh, SVG and Mostert are around that 340-350 mark. And then the next guys are over 400 behind. Um, There is quite a few close with Percat, Waters, Winterbottom, Reynolds, Coulthard and Lee Holdsworth in that 400 range. Um, But really, uh, they're pretty much out of the championship. It's... (sighs) Van Gisbergen could make a comeback from where he is. I don't think Mostert, they haven't got the speed. And... um, but really, Wing Cup's probably the only one that could spoil the Scott McLaughlin party for a third championship in a row. The other little things to cover off from the weekend, I did notice that the Bunnings Power Pass is only called the Bunnings Power Pass now. There is no Bunnings Power Pass Power Play, which was the most ridiculous, stupid, cricketeering kind of name that anyone could have come up for that. Uh, So... Just another one of those things. All of a sudden on Sunday, I'm like, hey, that's it. 
they only said the Bunnings Power Pass. And I had to wait and check it again to make sure. So I'm not sure, like the bit where the show the track map while the cars are on the track. Uh, this, I'm not sure if this has been happening for a while uh, or this is the first time this weekend, but I suppose it's, it's one of those things that because it just makes sense, you kind of don't notice that it's, you know, not stupid all of a sudden. So another two thumbs up for that little change. And Lex Kelly in the pits uh, asking the hard-hitting questions. If you haven't seen it, I'm sure it's probably up on YouTube somewhere. Rick Kelly's little fella, uh, I think he's like four or five. They let him loose with the microphone. Not sure how scripted it was or whatever. Um, it didn't seem that scripted, but like he you know, asked Scott McLaughlin, uh, you know, why do you have to win all the time? Can't you let some other guys have a go? Um, asked Chaz what was happening with his hair, you know, things like that. It, it, it was good fun and it was better than some of the questions that some of the other people, not mentioning any names at the moment, uh, but, you know, maybe you could get a full-time job doing it. It, it was enjoyable. So this weekend, everything going to plan. We will be in Townsville. Well, I won't be. I'm stuck in Melbourne, not allowed to go anywhere. Uh, but the, the supercars will be in Townsville. I assume three races. Top 10 shootout, not a top 15 shootout this time. That's because there's more cars on track, so they've got more crap to fill up the TV with. Uh, so the qualifying will make a bit more sense this time, I hope. Um, yeah, I'm don't even know what's happening with the tyres at the moment. I think it's all softs for the first weekend. So um, I can't help you much there with the preview. So <laughs> that's my Darwin 2.0 review. Um, once again, I think we need mixed up tyres on a track like that. Uh, but let me know what you think. Were you happier with the racing the way it was on the weekend? Or did you like Darwin 1 better like I did? Um, do you want variety in your life or do you want Scott McLaughlin winning everything every weekend? So until next time, I'll see you later. <laughs>